and it's easy to tie. But if you don't have that, you can tie with a regular one. These are just little attachments I have on here. You can see on other videos, and you'll see as I go. But this would clamp right in a vise. This is one that Cascade Crest brings over. Wapsie Fly makes one, which is a knockoff of HMH. HMH has one. And I use this one here, call it for mine, from Cascade Crest and put my tubes in it. My tubes come in various colors. As you can see, the object will be to get this body on here today. You can use whatever colors you want. And I'll have tape, lead, and aluminum back, weighted and unweighted in various colors. Now, as you can see, tube sizes vary tremendously because they extrude them so fast. So what I do right here is just a piece of 28 gauge wire, put that in here. If it's loose, some will be real tight and be hard to get on there. Some will fit just right. And this one here, let's get that in just a little bit more. Push it on back. See how that's now uh, moving nice and tight. And the reason for that is so that it doesn't spin when I put my thread on there. If it didn't have that, and it doesn't matter, most tubes that you get, they're going to have some play in there because they extrude it so fast. You got to put your thread on there to fall right off. So you just get that right on there be able to put your thread on and it'll hold. Another good thing for this vise is if you want the Norvice with that tube tire, you could go all the way back to here. If you wanted to put something on that tube, say like a chenille or some kind of body wrap or feathers. I'll get into that in another time. Okay, now get over to my curved scissors this is a prismatic tube now I'm gonna get this it's already folded in half it'll come flat and all you have to do is take the size that you want leave yourself a little bit for the head and we're gonna cut that right about there with my curved scissors it's almost in half not quite in half but we'll get that when we go to get it on the tube. Make one little snip here. Get just a little bit more belly into that. You can get quite a bit of belly if you want. And we'll peel this off. I usually do this, make up bodies before I even get to the tying bench. Give it just a little bit of play in the back. Now I'm putting it up here to show you. And you want to try to touch these two ends together so that you don't have any excess on either side. And you'll take, squeeze that together, run you. That's why it's. Ooh. Oil's in it. All plastics have oils. All plastics, including synthetic hairs, are, have a density that's lighter than water, so they float. This has aluminum backing on it. Ones with lead, not always legal. All areas nowadays will sink. Of course, you could put some tungsten eyes on this aluminum one if you want it and we'll get that spun up grab that aluminum just a little bit so that she don't slide and this one we're gonna get this here a little pink on there I'm gonna use pink pink color Polaris shark skin heads. 
I come across some materials now and then that amaze myself. We'll get this head back where we want it. You can make even longer one if you want, or if you want it short. The hook's going to come out, oh, about that far. With this here, it's going to equal about a one to two odd fly, depending on the shank lake length, whether it's fresh water, salt water. Another good thing with tubes is they last longer because it'll slide up the line. But you can use it in fresh water or salt water. So you can use a smaller hook. Actually, with this, you could use a size two hook or a four hook, depending on what you're targeting, what species. So, see how I tapered that a little bit by pulling that there? Let's loosen that up just a little bit. And we'll pull this right over. I'm grabbing it. All I did was pull that back. One, two, three, four, five. Couple wraps there. Shazam! Make a nice whip finish. Now, the easiest way to work these is to take it off, put your head on. But, but I don't want to change the camera angle. So, what you can do is get that about like that. You're going to fold that over. Just pinch the bottom, just a little bit like that. This is a polypropylene, what they call polypropylene foam. That's my coffee cup from a drilling company. Got for Xmas one year, if you ever hear that in these videos. Real cheap company. Anyway, back to this. It's you got an iridescent holographic. I ain't decided what it is. It's hard to tell. Got to send it to my specialty man down there on the East Coast. Let him find out. But we'll get a nice little bead right there. Bead right there. Wipe her off just a little bit. I like to get a little bit in that corner. Because these 3M tapes that they say are high tech and all that that they put on things. I've talked to the 3M guys and they say it is not waterproof. Okay, I wet my fingers. See how I got that open? I got a little bit of glue up in there. Slide that back and forth. So that'll bind in there. Got a wee little bit of glue coming out. Squeeze that in and get it kind of flat. So we can zoom in on that and you can still see. Should have had the light there for all that. Running low on time, so there she is. Now we're gonna put on some rattle eyes so that it'll rattle. Take this out after them stripers. Take this out after them sand bass or hybrids. Call them sand bass down there in Texas. Take that out after, heck, you can take that out after tarpon, smallmouth, just about anything you want. Because, look at that shine. Hooey! Ain't that gonna party? That'll flash. Now with these turbulators, you can take and tweak that like that. And when you strip, strip it, the hydraulic action from that water is going to make it want to turn. Or you can just leave it straight. And with that floating, this actually doesn't even have a foam back on that head, but she's going to be right underneath the surface. I've got foam heads made up, all kind of things. Have fun tying and fishing. <laughs>